Thanks for listening to the Adam Carolla Show on Podcast One. Well, we have a dandy of a show planned for you guys, and uh, thank you so much for sharing. I just saw the ratings. It went up. I love it when you do that. I'll tell you about a Good Samaritan story that uh, I was a part of over the weekend. People helping people, nothing better. Of course, got a dark side. Why wouldn't it? First, let me tell you about LifeLock. Cyber criminals stole 700 thousand customer records from a major hotel chain containing customers names email addresses and phone numbers oh your info is out there scammers could use that info to call in and get all the details of your personal info and uh, they got your phone numbers they got everything they can convince people of things it's horrible so many ways cyber criminals can try to take what's yours. Good thing. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection adds the power of Norton Security to help protect against threats to your devices you cannot easily see or fix on your own. We're coming around the corner. We're going right into 2020, people. Protect yourself. If there's a problem, their agents will work to fix it, but you won't have a problem because you got LifeLock, right, Dawson? No one prevents all identity theft or cybercrime or monitor transactions at all businesses with LifeLock. With Norton Security, can see threats you might miss on your own. Go to LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK and use promo code ADAM for 10% off your first year. That's promo code ADAM at LifeLock.com or 1-800-LIFELOCK for 10% off. I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets. Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Who are you? The projected increase in organic Q3 revenue. Hooray! Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Hey, it's Jennifer Lopez and Kiki Palmer. You ready to have a good time? Yeah. Our new movie, Hustlers, is coming in hot. We're joined by Constance Wu, Julia Stiles, Lily Reinhardt, Blizzo, and Cardi B. Hustlers is about power, money, getting even, and never looking back. Are you in? Hustlers, in cinema, September 13th. Support for the Adam Carolla podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Imagine how it feels to have an award-winning team by your side through every step of the mortgage process. That's exactly what you get with Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Rocket Mortgage does more to help you understand the home buying process so you can get exactly what you need. They've helped millions of Americans achieve their dream of home ownership. When you're ready to purchase your home, and the home of your dreams, they can help you as well. J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination nine years in a row and highest in mortgage servicing six years in a row. When you work with them, you get more than just a loan because Rocket Mortgage is more than just a lender. Right, Dawson? Get started online at rocketmortgage.com slash Adam. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. And on the last consumeraccess.org, number 3030. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Push button, get mortgage. From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Today... Former White House Director of Communications, Anthony Scaramucci, calls in. With Gina Grad on news, Paul Bryan on sound effects, and Dave Damashek here for good sports. And now, he's had rants about coffee creamer that lasted longer than Scaramucci in the White House. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Not to get it on the choice, but to get on the mandate, you get it on, man. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing. And uh, thank uh, netsuite.com slash am and rocketmortgage.com and betonline.ag as well. And Castrol as well for sponsoring the show. Good day, Gina Grad. Good day to you. Handball, Brian. <laughs> oh, Ozzy's in the hall. Hey. Yeah. Needs to talk. Oh. It always means money. All right. Uh, let's see. I had a little adventure yesterday and, uh, that was interesting. I'm, I'm curious. You guys tell me, um, you guys tell me your take on this dude, uh, I came across, uh, whilst hiking, uh, yesterday. Mm. 
So uh, it was, you know, Labor Day, whatever. I took uh, my daughter and her friend uh, to the beach. Um, they go down to Paradise, whatever, and frolic in the sand. I usually drop them off, and then I go off to Point Doom, and I just walk around. I just walk Point Doom. Try walk, not to get tickets. Don't fall through the tickets. stairs. <laughs> yeah, and just walk. Stairs are closed, but everyone's going underneath the tape. But just wow. you just walk. You just walk around. And uh, as I was coming back off of the Doom, Point Doom, the sort of big hillside, everything, path and everything, back onto the main road, I happened upon a large, a full-size Jag. It's a Jag I drove around for about a year. It's a sort of long wheelbase. The XJS? Yeah, I think it's the extended yeah. wheelbase one. It's a big flagship Jag sedan. Okay. Um, the Jag sedan was parked up on kind of the dirt uh, above sort of the curb where the road was. And there's like, I don't know, decomposed granite dirt. I think people think they can park there. That's where all the ticket riding parties go on. But people want to park near the trail, near mm -hmm. the end of Point Doom in Malibu. But you really can't legally park anywhere within about a half mile right. of that. But sometimes people try, like, I'll just pull up on this patch of dirt here and park, you know. It's all kind of stuff that anyone could have done in this country at any time mm -hmm. in the past. Like, if there was a chunk of dirt and it was next to the beach and you just park it's your stuck. truck there yeah. as a matter of fact you'd park your truck there and you'd crack a beer mm. and your dog would run around it's, it's like the tailgate yeah, yeah like there's just stuff we used to do that is now heavily regulated yeah. and there is no mm. there is no parking i mean if you just take a look at parking like you just take a look at you just take a look at this subject of parking like let's let's really break this down Whose land is this anyway? Is this this is your land, Mayor of Malibu, like uh, City Council people? Like who is who are paying for these streets? Like no. when they get when they get repaved, it's because you tacked eight cents onto a gallon of gas that the public paid for. You're welcome. Yes. When, when did this whole ticket writing right. thing come in and whose jurisdiction is this and who really owns this right. and is it really your right to write tickets? To people who are parked sort of safely, right. insanely. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously it's a cash grab, and so they've claimed it under the mantle of safety, and it's all everything right. falls under their umbrella. But it also kind of spiritually goes against, like the uh, like, ironically against what the uh, California, Malibu, Pacific Ocean, manifest destiny. It's it's right. it's, it's mm -hmm. the edge of the earth, you know. Suppose uh, you know back then, right. whatever that stuff. It's, it's sham. Now it's all just uh, regulations and restrictions. Right. So this guy. I think had pulled up onto this dirt area, sort of a tightly, kind of a decomposed gravel, kind of kind of hard packed over this sort of wooden curb. It's about eight inches off the thing. His problem is, is he had one tire on that dirt and then the other tire was sort of hanging inboard, not toward the street, but there was another little drop and that tire was sort of in the air. Mm. And the tire that was in, when I happened upon it, when I walked up, he was gassing it and just digging himself deeper and deeper and deeper. The rear end was just moving down to the point where the tire that had the traction, which is the one that was digging the hole, it was down about eight or ten inches. And it, it just created a half circle, like a perfect half, half circle. He wasn't going anywhere. There was a nice black couple who was in a Jeep. And they had a kind of makeshift tow rope tied up to the front of this guy's vehicle. And he was trying to pull while this guy gassed it. But all this guy was doing was digging himself deeper Aye. into the ground. So uh, I walked up and I said, uh, what's going on? And the guy who was driving the car and sort of owned the car, kind of middle-aged guy, reminded me of that. Puss from the Volvo commercial was writing oh. a note to his daughter, that ass wife. By the uh, lighthouse? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crying while yeah. he was writing his daughter a marriage letter. Anyway, what that's chump. what that's what this guy looked like. Um, clearly was Palestinian, Israeli, Middle Eastern. I don't know what he is. had a little bit of an accent. So I was kind of trying to explain to him stuff. And he, he understood me, but he had a little bit of an accent. His what appeared to be his wife was just Anglo chick, middle aged, nice, and and in a little bit of a panic. Like she was on the phone, she couldn't get AAA because the phone, the spotty mm -hmm. phone, they're not picking up. Blah blah blah. 
I walked up and I just l- sort of looked at it and I said, "Yeah, he's just digging. Don't don't get in and don't give any more gas. Every time you give gas, you go a little you go a little yeah. deeper." You and I hope that the host of CarCast shows up and just randomly <laughs> helps you with your car troubles. I just looked at it for a couple of beats and I said, "Well, we need a jack." And the woman popped the trunk of the Jag, and it was just filled with, like, beach towels and junk and Mm -hmm. stuff you'd have at the beach. And she started feverishly kind of digging through it to get to the hatch to get to where Mm -hmm. the spare was. The uh, gentleman of color who was driving the Jeep quickly, from the back of his Jeep, produced just a standard scissor jack, just the kind with that that thread that goes all the way through and it's kind of a scissor and you just turn, turn, turn and it just kind of starts to go it's like up. It's a, like a step pump type thing, right? No. Not the V? Uh, what am I talking it's about? It's crisscross, right? A scissor jack is just kind of I don't even know how to explain it. Yes, it's crisscross with a piece of threaded rod that oh, goes all oh, the way yeah, through okay. it and, and the more you turn it, the more it goes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he produced that and I said, all right, Let's get it as close as we can to the rear tire that's buried. Thank God it was low enough. The car at that point was about four inches off the ground, but this thing completely collapsed. was about three inches. Found the little arrow that represented the jack point. They, they'll, 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 just like, they'll just carve into the black running board at the bottom there, just like a little mm-hmm. triangle that says, here's your jack mm-hmm. point. Put it up there, started to jack it up. It started to sort of push the plastic fascia up. The guy in the Jeep said, no, no, slide it in further, slid it in a little further. And then I just started like sort of feverishly turning the handle. Got uh, the rear tire up off the ground enough so that it was actually a little bit higher than the actual surface of the ground. So the hole was right beneath it. I then explained to the woman uh man grab a flip-flop or a box or get that mcdonald's cup or whatever just start shoveling dirt into this hole because the hole all the dirt had been expelled from the hole just anything around just start pushing it in if you have a cup of water you know sprinkle water on it get it packed down get it get it going and uh they scooped it all in um ironically the guy who was the guy who was driving the car or whatever, he didn't really say anything and he didn't really do anything. The, the wife uh-huh. was like skirmishing. She was a skirmish. She was like pushing stuff like, oh, right. God, should we put a towel down and whatever? And I was like, no, just get all of the dirt that's around. Like I grabbed a McDonald's cup, like a large cup, had a little soda in it. I like threw it out. I was like, use this cup, fill it up, Scoop throw it in the earth. hole, put it get back. it on there. So we got the hole filled up so that it was like a little higher than the actual ground. And I said, okay, we're good now. And I reversed the scissor jack and I dropped it down. And sure enough, it was sitting at the level of the rest of the earth. And then I told the guy from the Volvo commercial, put it in neutral. (laughs) Put it in neutral. Don't get on it. Don't put it in drive. Just put it in neutral. And I told the brother in the Jeep, okay, now you go and pull him forward. And he pulled him forward and it all worked out. Uh, the chick was over the moon. She was hugging people. Wow. Uh, the black couple seemed pretty satisfied. I would seen. I was pretty satisfied. All in, it took about eight minutes. Wow. Like it was no, when you know how to do stuff, like it just doesn't take any time. The whole scissor jack and just fill it, whatever. You're not just, panicking. You're just getting it done. It was done in under 10 minutes, I, I remember. My biggest concern was just sort of gravel on my knees from just getting down mm. on the street. The woman was like hugging everyone and wanting to, wanting to, <laughs> you know, get everyone's address to send them fruit baskets or whatever. I, you know, th- I think the black couple and me just went, yeah, eh, no problem. It was nice. It was, um, I like the, I, I like the biracial nature of it. That's I, the only part of the story that bummed me was black couple in a jeep. I liked. Uh, I like, Where do I go from here? I liked the. I like the fact that they just stopped and helped. I like the fact that everyone is super nice. I I my I do think the default setting of our society is just basically decent people who want to do the right thing with a handful of horrible people mm-hmm. who shoot people in schools or say horrible things on the internet or mm-hmm. rob old ladies and then we've just assumed, I mean, I don't know. It's like what percentage of our society are actively racist versus 
what percentage of our society are are really racist versus right. regular folks. Just to help I, anyone in need. Made a Jew joke or something. Mm-hmm. You know, like, we've we've built it up. They're like, well, fifty percent are in the Klan, and the other fifty are <laughs> are dabbling with the idea of joining. Right. You know, <laughs> the application has been submitted. When, when in reality, it's a way less than one hundredth to one tenth of one percent. Right. Like we can take nothing. And really turn it into a oh, fucking lifestyle. We're great like, at we're, that. This is what we do. We're living in this wildly racist, clan filled whatever. When we're, no one's ever met anyone from the clan or been to a meeting or anything. It's just a bunch of pe- regular people want to get along. Yeah. And it's pretty evident every time you run into one of these scenes. And so it, it felt satisfying. It was weird that the guy did not really thank anybody Or show much (laughs) of anything to now. His wife was doing all the thanking for him. She was his proxy. She was enough for the both of them. He clearly was the guy who drove them into that place in the first. And then I was trying. I was trying to. I was trying to. And Max Bata. I don't know if anyone. I don't know how the internet works. And if anyone tweeted or wrote like car save thank you on in Malibu or any of that. I don't know if the chick took a picture or the black couple took a picture and like threw it up on the internet or whatever. But it's a long shot. But who the hell knows? Here's my point. I was. And then I just started dusting off my knees and I started walking down Into the, the road. Sunset. Yeah. Like Bill Cosby and the Hulk. And. and <laughs> At five minutes later, the black couple sort of passed me on the road and honked and waved. They seemed very friendly. And and everyone got a kick out of helping and solving yeah. problems. In, in a world where everyone's looking out for number one, there is something nice about. Now, there's some first things first. There's something nice about knowing how to do shit. Yeah. Uh, it's a lost art, knowing how to do shit. It's not neither here nor there. Right. It's not all like, well, we make money. How much money? You make money, then you get other people to do shit. Well, that's fine, but sometimes you're just walking and you stumble upon stuff and you need to do shit yourself. You can't hire a guy from right. fucking Grubhub or, you know, a home advisor or mm. Amy's Angie's List or list, something uh, to, like, come over to your car. Like, sometimes you need to do shit. If we sit here long enough, a race car driver will mm-hmm. happen upon us. And I don't know if you could have. If their reception was good enough to get hold of AAA. Not in Malibu. But that AAA... That triple A uh, I, I, modality was the over under on that was two hours. Right. That there was a two hours in the making of getting by. that truck right. to the you and getting it hooked up and getting you out of there. They're not my, hanging out in Topanga Canyon. My solution was under ten minutes. Now, uh, first off, eh, learn how to do shit because I, I I've never. Pulled uh, a jag. Uh, that's a waste of my time. Yes. I've never pulled a jag out of a hole in the sand before, but I have fixed a ton of shit. So when I walked up and I just looked at it, I sort of thought, I just sort of looked for a minute and I was like, somebody go get me a jack and let's get this fixed. Let's get it fixed. And it worked perfectly and it worked quickly. And the chick was over the moon. Now, the dude. I was thinking about the dude. I was thinking... Is it a cultural thing? Like in his world, mm. other, you know, that somehow this is, uh, you've emasculated, emasculating him. him or the fact that he could, you know, is it a cultural thing that somebody came and fixed him? What about the, the guy who came and fixed him was black? You know what I mean? Um, is it that he'd gotten himself into this and was sort of trying to, was ashamed of it or didn't face. want to be a little stoic yeah. about it or something? Mm. Was it, what was going on? in his world that he didn't, you know, reach for his wallet and go, hey, here's 20 bucks, here's 20 bucks. Like, seriously, He dude. didn't get out of his car, did Yeah, he? that was my question. He, did this Jaguar Jagoff ever get out of his car? He got out, he got in and out a few times. Just to survey well, the scene. <laughs> when I was jacking it up, <laughs> yes, I was jacking up the driver's side, so him sitting in it would have kind of... Real, an extra yeah. insult. Right, so he got out, but he... You know, at some point, the brother was turning the jack, and he was doing it in, in sort of a clumsy way, like mm-hmm. he had both hands mm-hmm. on it, was, and I sort of grabbed it in the middle and was doing kind of a, like, here, let me do that. Yeah. But he never, the dude didn't jump right. in or said, let me get that or whatever. He didn't really do a lot in the appreciation department, and he didn't do much in the help department, and he's just kind of 
standing by and watching. And when we were done, it was hugs all around for the wife, but not not mm. a fist bump from him. You know, what I know about Middle Eastern culture, I've been to Israel a time or two, and I, I know some Middle Easterners. I think it's... um. I think it's a real rich man, poor man in the emotion department. Mm -hmm. It's either hugs and kisses on the face or it is. Yeah. Or it is stoic and uh, machismo and aloof. Mm -hmm. I I don't I've never seen the middle ground. And you're reminding me of that. Yeah. Well, anyway. So you didn't get the kisses on the cheeks. And the no, you're right. To you're right. Offerings. You're right. Yeah, the I did part, not get that. The part about him that makes sense to me is, okay, he obviously doesn't know what he's doing. There are people outside who know what they're doing, so just stand back, let them do their thing, and kind of just you know swallow your pride. But the then, part that doesn't make sense is part two, where it's like, no acknowledgement, no thanks, no attaboy. Eh, that, that part didn't make sense. I don't like that. I think if you talk to him, he'd go, oh, I was happy yeah, that was it was fixed. You know? But it's like he didn't really say anything or do anything. Do you he didn't think, express it. Do you think it's because he was in a super expensive car and you were just some schmuck walking up the street and these two were just some schmucks in a jeep and thanks for nothing you hoi polloi eh, there's a it's tough it's kind of like when people <laughs> talk about his jaguar keys out of his pocket yeah, exactly. oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> it's like when people talk about oh uh, you know he's got a fear of success i'm like i don't know does he does, does he? he have a fear of success Based on what? who has a fear of success like i don't most people want to be successful maybe he's just lazy or maybe he's yeah. an asshole or yeah. maybe he has a uh, you know, we have bad work ethic, but That's is he a- fearful of success? Like, I, I know there's a lot of like, well, you kind of embarrassed him. By fixing his car? Yeah, no, like, that's what I mean. Like, it, of course someone's going to happen upon the car and do my bidding. Like, was he just kind of an asshole like that? I, he he was driving a flagship Jag. <laughs> like, he was driving a $110,000 Jag. It's next JL. Well, he, next JL. He was... Yeah, sorry. So I'm, 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 or I'm whatever. I'm whatever. He was driving a very expensive car. He was, you know, 55. He clearly seemed like he wasn't hurting for cash. He, I got this thing where he's very successful in some realm that has nothing to do with his hands and probably probably looked down on the whole sort of blue collar ordeal is, is beneath him. But I, I'll never know. Will mm. shall be the answer. Either way. It was, uh, it's nice to know things, and it's nice to help. Yeah. And uh, the- Whether the, you get appreciated or not. The, well, the wife did enough celebrating for, for everybody, <laughs> which was nice. And she was like so clearly, oh my God, we're going to be here all goddamn night. And literally nine minutes later, they were on their way. So she was, she was into it. On that subject, sort of, Barry, 48, Toronto. Hmm. Line six. Maybe it's Bari. Oh, I'm sorry. So I really don't know. He just dropped like a oh. second ago. Yeah. Oh. B-A-R-R-Y. Okay. Let's see. So many douchebags. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, actually, I screwed that up again. I'm going to try that. Line three. Uh, Nathaniel. Yes, sir. What's going on, man? From Michigan. Uh, yes. From Michigan. I got a couple of statements just as a disclaimer. The world is a beautiful place. That's the first one. Good. Um, and then, uh, you know, good people do good things. However. And water's yeah, however, wet. Well, <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> that being said. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, why don't more men want to be carpenters? Well, it, there's an element. It's just a waste of my time. There, there's a couple things I, it's yeah. not a waste of your time you, 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 you want to know how to do it's things, a waste of right? time. I, didn't, I didn't say it all right let me let me drill down pardon the pun i just bought a half a, half uh half inch drill motor it's in the back of my car right now half a, you got a half inch what? drill motor i don't know why they call okay. drill motors when they go up to from three eighths to half inch anyway oh by the way the, the thread in those uh, scissor jacks is acne thread Oh, good to know. Sound like yeah. Dan just in case you ever that. need to replace one. <laughs> All right, so I, 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 the whole scissor jack in totality is twelve dollars. So mm-hmm. I don't think you'd be breaking it down <laughs> and <laughs> replacing I, a part on it. No, probably just go you to know. Harbor Freight and they'd give you a new one for free. All right, so <laughs> let's let's break it down. I'm gonna put you on hold for one second. We have we've had a couple of drum beats in this in this society. Go to college. Go to college. First first family member to go to college. You got to save. You got to go to college. You get those grades up. You go to college. 
You go to a smaller college, a two-year college, you get your grades, then you mm-hmm. transfer. Like, we're so obsessed with college that we tell the dumb fucks, don't worry, there's a dumb fuck college on the corner. That's mm-hmm. called junior college. They take idiots like you. Go there. You'll be fine. Get your grades up. Don't do anything you did in high school. Do something different that's not in your DNA. Get your grades up. Then you transfer. Yeah. You're going to be a sun yeah. devil. Right. <laughs> then you transfer to a four-year school. So I was like... So much like college, 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 save for college first, you know, for we're going to look back. I think we're going to look back on college like we now are starting to look back on margarine <laughs> and snack wells. Like, really, that was the answer for everything. Uh, like, we, for just, the grads. we just decided that this was fat was bad and butter was bad and dairy was bad and meat was bad. But if you could get some country crock and some snack wells, you could eat yourself to a healthier you. And it's like, oh, if you could just get to college right. and. Now everyone's talking about I got $150,000 worth of debt, and then I was a Chicano Studies major or whatever. And it's like, I I don't know. We're going to look back at this a little period of everyone needs to go to college and kind of go, hmm, maybe everyone didn't need to go. Yeah. So for Nathaniel, first off, we've had a steady diet of uh, margarine is bad for you. Uh, nuclear power is bad. You know, we just mm-hmm. fat is bad. We just fed it, fed it, fed it. It's going to take a while to undo, you know, 40 years of dogma, essentially. Um, also, being a carpenter is it's sort of like me handing you acoustic mm-hmm. guitar and go play flamenco guitar. And then you go, uh, that's going to take 10 years. Like you go, okay, just practice every day for eight hours. It's it's kind of a long slog. Right, it's right. kind of a bummer. Like it, it, it's hard to get light in a tunnel. It's a long to to be a journeyman carpenter. It's ten years of all day, every day, and you just wouldn't know your way around every facet of framing and foundation and finish work and other things that start with an F. <laughs> <laughs> and doing you know door hanging. I mean, there's a lot. To it, and it's a good decade in, and lots of tools, and it's not like you're wildly compensated. Also, we don't really have, you know, apprenticeship programs per se. Mm-hmm. You want to learn to be a carpenter, you show up on a job site, and you basically dig ditches and clean up garbage and go on lunch runs and get up on the roof and spread the plastic out when it starts raining and all the junk nobody wants to do that really yeah has nothing to do with carpentry yeah you do as much for carpentry as is a is as joke writing as much joke writing as a pa for snl does like their first year like you might walk by the writer's room a couple times um if you're lucky, you're dropping coffee off and you overhear a joke yeah. and you get oh. to say something, but that's as close as you get. You're lucky if they know your name. Right. So also, we so we don't put an emphasis on it. We kind of look down our noses at it in terms of everyone's in four-year mode. We're starting to wake up to the fact that these are jobs. These are jobs that are here to stay. You know, when they start talking about uh, we don't have enough uh, cheap housing in the Southland or whatever. Well, who's going to build all that housing? Right. Not 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 the drones from Amazon and not all the guys with the philosophy degrees from uh, Amherst. So I, I I wish we would. I, I think it's a kind of a snobbery from the parents and kind of a snobbery in by society at large. I I took my son with me yesterday to the shop and I was building something and I just basically said you have to sit here and watch like you have to watch are you kidding me you gotta hand me stuff and like you're just gonna watch me work for two hours and I just he had his mountain bike there so it's like after two hour after basically he'd served his time (laughs) which is his two hours that's what you want to do is attach negative energy to that father he got to leave but i said you know hand me that do that organize that like he kind of started to get it and what are you talking about kind of expose him to that and that part of life and it's a much saner part of life it's a part of life that people sort of run from but there's really nothing better than uh, the visual progress part of it like really getting some stuff done Mm -hmm. and stepping Mm -hmm. back and looking at it i don't know has anybody has anyone ever been depressed the night after 
a barn raising. Has anyone ever Brian, sat oh, down? Is, Chris, can you Google that? <laughs> Hold on. Has anyone ever sat down for a meal at 6 o'clock after raising a barn the entire goddamn day and went, man, I am bummed out. I wish I'd never engage in that behavior at all. The one maudlin Irish in the corner going, is this all there is? Yes. I mean, is anyone ever bummed out after a good day of sweating through yeah. your shirt Earning. and getting a little dirt on your hands yeah. and then stepping back and looking at a picture of a bunch of stuff that's there wasn't there at the beginning of the day i i don't i don't think so and i think there's a direct and straight line between all this sort of sedentary sort of uh intellectual processing going on and everyone's misery index going through the roof uh versus the get out there and break a sweat mm-hmm. Um, You know, the get out there and break a sweat, like we all know, well, you get out and you hit the trail, man, and you you hike through Malibu for two hours, or you go on that, get on that mountain bike Mm -hmm. and hit that trail or whatever. We all go, oh, that, oh, yeah, that feels good. Like, Mm -hmm. I get it. I get the psychological dynamic of that. Well, imagine combining the sort of physicality of like being up on your feet and putting that beam up in place and sweating and, you know, cutting stuff and and carrying the beam. You get the full physicality Mm -hmm. of the sweat and being on your feet and the muscles and the, and and the blood and the, and the, and the muscles and everything. You get all of that. And then you get this really strong psychological Mm -hmm. dynamic of, and we built this. Like, you know, when you're done with your mountain bike ride or you're done with your hike or your kayak, whatever, you feel pretty damn good, but you didn't build anything. You know, there's the rivers behind yeah. you, but you didn't. Nothing to show for it. Yeah, there's something Just when you're done with that tree house and your kids climbing up the ladder and laughing up at, on top of that tree house. That, that is pretty awesome. sweat, movement, physicality, yeah. and the whole then part, the dynamic of physically doing right. something. And when you build a, a platform bed for your daughter and you sit back and <laughs> right before you say, I'm so proud of myself, she wants it out. Yeah. yeah. Super satisfying. <laughs> All right, so uh, engage in more of that. Uh, Mike Rowe would agree with you. Oh, God, that guy. He has a whole foundation. Of Mike Rowe Works is, is that very thing, going to the trades. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, hmm? Oh. Uh, Scaramucci's dropping? Yeah, he, he can't do the uh, time we had scheduled, so I'm working on rescheduling it for oh, later in the show. Come on. Oh, come okay. On, he's at, he says he's at a dinner he can't get out of. So at, wait, later in the show? Or? He's East Coast, so it's oh, all right. it's a little early dinner. Yeah. I predicted he would drop out of this phone call. Oh, that's funny. Did you? No, it's, 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 oh. on his bias. I predicts Trump's going to drop out of the race. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, it's about, inside it. baseball. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, it was sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, you know, if we can't, I mean, just tell him to pick a better day. It yeah, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Fine. Um, all right. Uh, what were we talking about? Building, yeah. sweating, Building, doing. Sweating. Trade, trade mm-hmm. work. But what was your last one? Micro. Oh, micro. Love micro. It's you know what I love about micro? Mm. Insane pragmatist. Yep. Nothing better than pragmatic. I don't know. In this world where everyone is insane and everyone is prone to hyperbole and everyone's eating their own, chewing on their own paws, uh, micros sort of aw shucks pragmatism meets with some real intellectual genius yes. there like meets with some some firepower absolutely there. and anyone who says oh he's just a lug head that doesn't know what he's talking about he was in a barbershop quartet oh that's he right has a lot of range he was in i think the baltimore uh opera he's, yes he's, he's quite a renaissance man nothing wrong with that oh. thick and wooden all <laughs> right uh jason 45 san francisco hey how What's you going doing on? buddy yeah man so uh, my missus and I were uh, – somebody attempted to stab us in San Francisco um, on Saturday morning around 10.30 in the morning at our favorite coffee shop. The cops chased him, got him, methamphetamine dealers, blah, blah, blah. So I, uh, I have a college degree in industrial design. I own my own business in San Francisco making custom LEDs, and we just need to get out of here. So my question is – what city do you recommend that has a healthy construction um, presence that's on the water that we can move to um, that just has that kind of like I, I love micro I love that work ethic kind of kind of town I'm from uh, the armpit of the U.S. which is Youngstown, Ohio. I was going to say Cincinnati. 
Did they? Uh, <laughs> uh, I went to school in Cincinnati. The, uh, the guy who just, the guy who pulled the knife. What was his deal? Was he a homeless guy? Was he a drug dealer? I know he said meth, but yeah. Uh, well, it was two guys actually, and I used a chair to kind of separate us. Wow. But uh, it was an team, older black team. dude, probably fifty-five, and then a younger. Um, I think he was Blacker from dude. Honduras because oh, okay. his height was around four foot ten. Mm-hmm. His reach was around four inches. Um, so the, the, they just kind of, you know, mouthed off, and it just kind of escalated. We asked them to leave, and they kept coming back and coming back. And one guy was like, "Oh, you can't let that white boy talk to you that way." And he just pulled a knife, so I plunged the chair through his throat and Jesus. called the police. My God, wow. is this a confession? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're definitely getting into a sort of a breakdown of rule of law. And I don't I feel like yeah, it's like San Francisco. You can't even like I mean, I have a business. I got to push. Well, let's just break this down for a second. Mm. Think about driving. There's a rule of law. And how my driving habits have not changed in 20 years because cops pulling me over haven't changed right. in 20 years. You know, I, I'm the exact same person I was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, which is I'll go a little above the speed limit. I'll keep my head on a swivel. I'll look out for cops. If I'm going to Vegas or the grapevine, I'll definitely be worried about certain de- long mm-hmm. downhill runs, mm-hmm. you know, where you start to pick up right. speed and the cops at the bottom of the radar detector. Like, I don't think anybody – it's not like you get on the freeway and people are going 128 miles an hour. People are doing what they were doing 10 years mm-hmm. ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Now, the cars are safer and faster and everything – er, But the speed of – Same. The, the speed of the average guy who was driving his – you know, if you had a – 2003 Honda CRV, mm. and you're driving to Vegas, that same person is driving the same speed a guy in a 2019 Honda CRV is, even mm. though the 2019 version is a much more stable, much safer, quieter, everything, everything evolution of a, of a vehicle that hasn't changed. Well, why aren't we going 122 miles an hour? Well, cops are writing tickets. That hasn't changed. That's been a that's just been a consistent through line. We we haven't changed our behavior because they haven't changed their behavior. Now, what if cops just stop writing tickets? What if it was like eh, everyone drives to Vegas to get there two and a half hours now? The cops and they can't do anything about it. They won't do anything about it. Uh, the, the mayor sort of said, "Ah, eh, look the other way" or right. whatever. Okay, then our behavior would change. Mm-hmm. So in the driving department. Cops are still Johnny on the spot. Our behavior has not changed. We've not sped up at all. In the homeless, confront people in the street department, break into cars department, that relationship has changed with the cops. Cops are looking the other way, not pulling people off the sidewalk, kind of uh, live and let live. Most of the mayors and the folks that run these cities like San Francisco and L.A. and Portland and stuff have given them the stand down move. Well, thus, what has happened? Behavior changed. The behavior changed. Okay, Shall it go any other way? Would it go any other way? No. They stopped doing what they were formerly doing, and the public or this percentage of people went, okay, no, now I shall more. bust into more. I, mean, I don't know. San Francisco had like, I don't it had some crazy like 80 car break-ins every day in the city. They, they, they solved 3% of them. Like, okay, since we're not going to be prosecuted or pursued for breaking into cars and stealing people's purses or briefcases – then we shall do it. So what changed? Mm-hmm. And again, I ask you, driving to Vegas, if nothing changes, <laughs> then we don't change. Right. If the cops, what if you just found out, what if you just took the cops approach to tickets, mm-hmm. whatever they're doing with homeless and crime and petty crime on the streets of San Francisco and applied that to the fucking grapevine or the drive to Vegas. No. I'd be going 125 miles an hour. Road. Be the Audubon. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is the cops aren't enforcing this one thing. They're still enforcing 
uh, very feverishly the other thing, and that's why that's what it is. The other one, they're not. It's a breakdown of the fucking rule of law because at some point we decided that the person arresting the person who is engaged in the behavior and incarcerating incarcerating the person who was involved in that behavior, they were the bad people, Mm -hmm. just like we decided that the principal that was suspending the student was the bad person, not the student that refused to put their cell phone down after the teacher repeatedly asked. We've done a retarded reverse engineering, like blaming the fucking ambulance driver for the motorcycle wreck. It's fucking retarded, but that's where we're at. And the politicians are down with it, too. Like, they're blaming the ambulance drivers for the motorcycle wreck. And they're like, well, if it wasn't for those ambulance drivers. Oh, yes, he is getting into an ambulance, but he didn't cause the wreck. That's where we're at. We're literally blaming cops and wardens for the crime, which is fucking nuts. And all it's going to do is lead to more of what uh, poor Jason had to deal with. Hey, Jason, yeah, I was, that we have a, I'm looking yeah. at an outreach tent right now where they register them to vote. They give them money and they give them, you know, toiletries and stuff. And 50 feet away from them, there's five Honduran drug dealers like selling crack. So the same people that are going to the tent to try to get off drugs, that you can literally see them from the outreach tent. And it's just like a revolving door of crazy. Gina has a uh, suggestion. A suggestion. And, and Adam and Brian jump in because mm. it's a little more local to where we are. If he's looking for a place by the water that does, you know, that has that sort of industrial vibe that has that community. What about like San Pedro, Long Beach, that area? Yeah, work the derricks. Yeah. Come down south a little bit. Come join us. Yeah, I'd stop in Santa Barbara. But, but I don't know how much Is that a thriving industrial no. design community? He wants near the water. Opportunities for construction. Chase, you move to the Bahamas. Oh, yes. Brian, please. All what's right. In, what's in the news? Let me uh, hit uh, betonline.ag mm. and got the uh, weekly Pick'em Charity Contest. You're ready for some football, people. It's officially happening. Week one in the uh, NFL kickoff. Looking for a place to make some online wagers. Head to betonline.ag. Take advantage of the best bonuses in the business. Huge matchups week one. Green Bay versus Chicago. Atlanta versus Minnesota. Rams at Carolina. Are they at Carolina? I guess so. Are they here? Pittsburgh, New England. All good matchups. We got a $500 uh, $500 in rewards to give out to each week to five listeners and uh, 5,000. A 5,000 season-long charity contest. Join the conversation at Twitter at hashtag SportsNetChallenge. Brian, let's see. I made a few picks. You got well, let me explain the picks. way it works real quick. Is it, is it, well, it was even confusing to me. I had emailed the guys at Podcast One. So the way it works is you and I are both going to make picks, right? Every week make five picks. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is good for the listeners because if either one of us uh, is the uh, winner in the Podcast uh, One SportsNet Challenge, I guess the most number of picks correct, Five of our listeners are going to have an opportunity with $100 each in their betonline.ag uh, accounts. So if you or I finish first uh, in the Pick'em, uh, people will just t- uh, tweet us with their uh, hashtag podcast one sports net challenge and uh, 100 bucks goes to five random listeners. Brian will give his later in the week. Mm-hmm. I'll do mine. I'll take the Chiefs away versus the Jags. I'll take the Rams away versus Carolina Panthers. I'll take the Browns at home versus oh. the Titans. Chargers at home versus the Colts and the Seahawks at home versus the Bengals. All right. And use the promo code podcast one. Get a 50 percent sign up bonus. BetOnline.ag. All right. Yes, Gina Grad. Speaking of that, remember the other day when we were talking about novelty cereals? Yes. Well, Mr. guess. Mr. T's you novelty got cereal. It. And Elvira and everybody else. Well, guess what came in the mail for me the other day? I'm sorry. Hmm. I don't have a better picture of it. My mom, who lives in Kansas, uh, found the, the grocery store High V, which is a you know, chain in, in the Midwest, mm. and they are putting up a Mahomes Magic Crunch. 
Mm. cereal. This was just me opening the box. Take so that, Doug Flutie. He, your has, wow. he has his own cereal. They were completely sold out the same day my mom ran to the store to get one for each of my family members because she loves stuff like that. They're going for 50 bucks a pop on eBay, and she sent a big box out for me and my Ooh, dad. Gina, and you could flip that shit. I really could. We didn't open it. It's a Apparently $4 it's, box of it's, cereal. Yeah, it's basically Frosted Flakes. It's High V's Mahomes Magic Crunch, and I have I'm, my very own box. I'm jealous of your mom <laughs> in the same way way that I'm jealous of Brian and his festive socks. Mm. Oh, it's almost Do the tell. season. It's almost the season. <laughs> what am I going to wear last of all, Brian? Tune in to find out. I love it when people just have... It, I, I love it because it's the exact opposite of my family and yeah. everyone in my family. Just like, she thinks it's so fun. She loves it. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. She's just like, getting I, swept up in the hype. I love that. Now, obviously. Her grown children are living in other states. Obviously, it's oh, pathetic and thing. a colossal waste of time, no, but I still sorry, envy it. <laughs> that's I cool. about Brian and his socks as well. Hey. Like, I, I envy it. I'm, I'm praising you. Does it hey. feel like a real backhanded compliment? When Overland Park, Kansas got its first Trader Joe's, my mom cried and said, stay on the phone with me. I just. <laughs> Are you sure your mom's well? No, she just loves that kind of stuff. It's fun. It's so weird to be jaded and dead inside at the same time. Like I feel like I'm externally da- jaded oh, and yeah. internally dead inside, yeah. and I wish I could get excited about <laughs> cornflakes. You know, like, like I'd be so fucking pumped. I thought it was cute, but I don't. I'm the same way. I don't need it, but it was very cute. I love that. Yeah. What I if I came out mom. with Jack Youngblood <laughs> cornflakes? How excited would you be? <laughs> It's bad to have the word blood in the, so sure, close to the word true. flakes. Uh, Brian, 33, Oklahoma. Hey, how you doing? Good. What's going on? I've been having an argument with my wife the past few weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just took our daughter to go see Paw Patrol Live. Nice. And on her way back. We see what? We Paw Patrol. High- oh, Live? We went to see Paw Pop- Yeah, it's a show. Don't go see it. Don't, mm-hmm. Do not. Anyway. Uh, on our way back, we had an undercover cop in front of us on the highway, mm-hmm. and we had a Porsche 911 GT3 RS mm-hmm. pushing a hundred. Mm-hmm. Comes whipping around us, and this cop lights him up, does not pull him over, and I thought that was either the coolest cop I've ever met or the dumbest cop. Can you? Decide which one it is. Well, how does a cop light somebody up but then not yeah. pull them over? Just doesn't, doesn't, really just trying to get around him. He's he's getting right. He's up right next to him. Does the sirens? Pull turns the lights on. Turns them off immediately. Hmm. It's good. It, there's there's a couple things going on. A, you're in Oklahoma, so it's probably not yep. a whole bunch of GT3 RS guys bopping around. No. <laughs> this cop could have known this dude. Oh, oh well. interesting. Well, it's a pretty unique, yeah. it's, it's a very expensive and pretty yeah. one-off, and there's not a lot. You see a fair bit in Malibu, but you don't see a lot in what, what part of Oklahoma you call, call them from? Don't act like you're in Oklahoma. <laughs> Tulsa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tulsa. You've heard of Tulsa, surely. Yes, but where are you at? Plot it on a map right he said now. Tulsa. Oh, he said Tulsa. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's probably not a hotbed of Porsche fanatics over there. That's and if a you're pr- Highway Patrol working the same stretch, that's a pretty you know unique I mean? car. Somebody owns that car as a rich guy mm-hmm. in Tulsa, and somebody knows somebody. Mm-hmm. T. Boone Pickens. Yeah, and cops also like... Cops are car guys. I mean, like the one shot you do have if you get pulled over by a cop you are better off getting pulled over doing 90 in a porsche gt3 than you are in a minivan Mm. they actually if you get a dude cop a lot of cops are 27 year old dudes who like cars i've I've had cops pull me over before and dig the car so it man show helps too um yeah Anyway, I don't know. I like uh, I like that cop, and then that's what I would do. And and when you say undercover cop, you just mean like sort of plain marked car, unmarked car. Yeah, it was a, it was an unmarked Ford Fusion. Hmm. I don't like the fact that they take the lights and they got them off the roof. I know that's a bummer, man. I yeah. used to. It was a he- giveaway. I used to have. I rely heavily on that silhouette, <laughs> and when they move those things just onto the 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 sort of the. I don't know, the package shelf above the rear seats or whatever. I can't see it now. It's bummed me out. All right. uh, We will take ourselves a quick break. I have thoughts on that whole crazy boat going down. I have thoughts, possibly unpopular thoughts. I don't know. 
Uh, also, we've uh, added a live show in Kentucky, September 20th, if uh, people want to come out. A rare trip to the out. South. A rare yeah, trip. Our yeah. first besides Florida. Yeah, so there's uh, that going on. Where's it at? Comedy Off Broadway. Comedy Off Broadway. So we're doing a live pod over there. We'll take a quick break. Oh, horse on the airplane. Oh, yeah. Do that right after this. Johnny got a toy golf set when he was three, and from that day on, he was hooked. All he wanted to do was golf, golf, golf. He'd be on the links before school, after school. All he ever wanted was to go pro. And then, one day, when he was holding his grandson and thinking about his 12th handicap, Johnny realized it just might not happen for him. But you know what did happen for him? He switched to Geico and saved a bunch of money on car insurance. So that was good, and so was hanging out with his grandson. Hey, it's Jennifer Lopez and Kiki Palmer. You ready to have a good time? Yeah. Our new movie, Hustlers, is coming in hot. We're joined by Constance Wu, Julia Stiles, Lily Reinhardt, Lizzo, and Cardi B. Hustlers is about power, money, getting even, and never looking back. Are you in? Hustlers, in cinema September 13th. $25, you get wine and gifts. Ace's favorite stuff or products from ACS. Every single month, you get the drink you choose. It's hard to beat cool stuff and booze. Adam's Monthly Nut. Adam's Monthly Nut. Adam's Monthly Nut. Adam's Monthly Nut. Month four of Adam's Monthly Nut is sold out. Too bad you missed out on the gifts in this month's sack. But don't worry, there's still a way to get crazy go nuts and dude wipes delivered right to your doorstep. Head to dudewipes.com and use the promo code ADAM20 for 20% off your order. Head to crazygonutswalnuts.com for 20% off everything in store, excluding case orders through September. Thanks to our sponsors for joining Month 4. And stay tuned. The Month 5 announcement is right around the corner. There may be a golden ticket inside. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Oh, Ace Man, imagine those attack crows or attack hawks being deployed during a high-speed chase. You're watching that helicopter footage, the guy crashes into the Quickie Mart, hops out, he's running through the neighborhood, bam, he's down. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Wow, I got thoughts. Uh, I want to thank our uh, good friends in Portland, Bato's Barbecue, came by and buffed us all out nice. in the green room at the Portland Speed Museum. Oh, my God. Look at that. Absolutely. Jesus. Beautiful. Max Pat, what oh. the brisket was to die for. But what were those rib ends? Oh, those are those are pork bellies, like the pork belly squares. Oh. Yeah, like pork belly squares. They're like inch and a half by inch and a half, three quarters thick. It was like eating a rib without oh, the bone. God, it was so amazing. goddamn super, like good. Super thick bacon? Yes. Yeah. It was basically like eating super thick bacon. Oh, yes. God damn, was it good. All right, uh, the boat fire. I thought I've been hearing about this boat fire. Yeah. Um, it was a three-day-long luxury diving trip, and uh, this was the day number three. I guess it happened in the middle of the wee of the hours, the middle yeah. of 3.15 a.m., Labor Day. Everyone was sleeping down below, and it was a horrible fire. <laughs> and uh, 33 passengers, six crew. Anyway, tw- 20 bodies have been recovered so they think there's 34 yeah. all, all together in the body department. A couple of crew members survived, like five maybe, but they're assuming everyone else is dead. How far out were they? And uh, But anyway. I thought I read 20 yards. Does that make sense? You could be close to shore. I said they okay. were in about 60 foot of water, which didn't From seem very From the Channel deep. Islands, yes, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so first things first, anything could happen at any time. Everyone is so worried about you know, everyone goes through their life worried about Al Qaeda and killer bees and Ebola virus and stuff. But 
this is the way you die. Right. If you're going to die in a freakish way, it'll be this. No one worries about going on diving trips and burning in a boat. You know, we're all so wired for all the, you know, weird shit. We never really think about things like this. And and it's kind of it's kind of a it's an interesting mindset. It's so you like, guys on board the Corolla Cruise in a month? Yeah. We'll so be fine. The, there's that. Um, but I also started thinking, like, I am an atheist. I'm a pro-death penalty because I just like killing people who do horrible things to other people once we figure it out. But I also have thoughts. Like, when people do a thing where they go, like, oh, there was a shooting in a synagogue and they – they shot a nine-year-old boy and a 91-year-old woman. And when people hear, like, 91-year-old woman, they go, oh, my goodness. And I always, I always kind of think to myself, most people don't see 91, you know. And uh, not a good day for her. <laughs> but if the average life expectancy of a woman is 81 in four months and she made it a decade past that, I don't I – don't, Stay up at night. I I, I agree for the nine year old because I think about Jesus. I never had a, got his driver's license or got laid or who knows what they could have done. You know, so I'm kind of wired that way. Like when I hear about you know the homeless junkie got the, infected by uh, the scarlet fever or something. I'm like all right, well that guy was a petty criminal sleeping on the street. Like I. Not in. I'm not. I'm definitely don't. I do not do the all of humanity is exactly the same. I've seen enough. Of, you know, I've, I've heard enough stories. Take World War II for example. There are stories of people being heroes and saving the war and doing that. And there's people. Then there's other people doing horrific and horrible things constantly. You know. A lot of Japanese soldiers raping a lot of Korean women. You know, it's like, oh, is everyone a hero or is everyone good? Is everyone bad? So um, I compartmentalize and I realize something like that ship really bums me out because, A, that's a big group of taxpayers. Like that's a group of people that are like living their life, loving their life. I mean, the fact that they just went out and did that, you know what I mean? Like, Probably looking like, forward to it for months. Yeah, and they got this thing where it's like, oh, there was a mom and a 17-year-old daughter. And it's like, those guys had a good relationship. Yeah. And they loved each other, and they were out getting some. You know what I mean? Like, I do draw – again, when my dad dies, it'll be a lateral move. Mm-hmm. He's not out – You won't notice for weeks. He's not out getting some. He right. never was out getting some. He's sort of like sitting somewhere. He'd never die in a dive ship because he'd never get on a boat. Yeah. You There's know? no like, yeah. I, I do have a thing when people that are out there – living their life because if you think about it well you take um homeless guy perpetual junkie strung out on the street whatever how much life does that person have you take my dad planted on a sofa staring at a book you know it's like Nobody deserves to die, but how much life? We're talking about taking a life. They go taking a life. Yeah, hello? Uh, I feel like your wife, Christy Bishop, she's like living three lives. She gets you know what I mean? It. If anything happens to her, that's taking a lot of life. Are you saying she's having an affair? <laughs> she has a passion <laughs> for all things. She, she has her all baseline you know, day-to-day life, I'm making air quotes, and then she has the life she, she enjoys. I'm saying if we go... A tragic loss of life, I think if we were to assign a number to my mom's life, it would be a lot lower than Christy Bishop's life. I and, think so. And probably Elon Musk would probably outscore Christy. You know what I mean? For like now. It's, it's, a, it's a number. It's, it's, it's a number. Yeah. For me, and my feeling is everyone on that boat, by virtue of being on a three-day diving cruise, was living – They were into life. I mean, think about someone who wants to go out on a three day Mm -hmm. diving cruise. That's like the 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 epitome of I'm living my life. You show someone in the ocean who didn't fall off a boat. I'm showing you someone who's into life. I'm showing you someone who goes, I'm going to plan this out. I'm going to pay for it. I'm going to get the equipment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get the training. I'm going to put it on the calendar. I'm going to get my daughter, my Mm -hmm. fiance, or like uh, whatever it is, who also loves 
living their yeah. life as well. And you are cut short in the middle of living your life versus I'm, I'm asleep on, a, on a, under an overpass. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I, I, a side thought. I like your idea of like, you know, the score of who's living their life. A combine, combined with like accomplishments, but also living that life. Who has the highest score? Who's living their life to the fullest? I got some nominees. Just to, just to start off oh, the conversation. Nominees. Okay. Mark Cuban. Mm. Richard Branson. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jeff Goldblum. Oh, sure. Mm. He's a zaddy. Yeah, that's right. It's, I mean, I'm taking nominees at the at Adam Carolla show. At yeah, Ryan. it's a good idea. <laughs> it's, and you know, speaking it's, of living your life, Rob Lowe had been on this boat, the conception, multiple times. Really? And tweeted, oh, my God, my heart is broken. You know how many times I've been on this boat and doing this trip? So, yeah, maybe throw him on the list. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Now, the only... Like, who's getting after it? Well... The only distinction, you have to kind of figure it out, it's kind of like a tool tune, like you have to kind of mm-hmm. dial it in, is you take a guy like Mark Garagos. Mark Garagos is getting after it. He's killing yeah, he's it. On he's on the list. always doing something. <laughs> Howie Mandel's a nominee. Uh, he should, yeah. yeah. Now, but Garagos is doing a lot of work, Yeah, mm-hmm. but he's also living it, but it's also a lot of work. So you're trying to try to figure out what is... You know, we can't just define who works the most. Right. That's what I'm saying. It, it's but it's that zest. That Adam, zeal. you're off the list. Right. But like, who's out killing it? Like Branson, I, I imagine a lot of his work and a lot of this putting on a character, you know, for that that image, that work mm-hmm. image. So I don't know. No, I hate scores on the scale. All right. Of course, okay. Goldblum, like he's, he's doing jazz. He's I, acting. He's I doing... have seen Richard Branson on TV climb to the top of a hot air balloon and sit and have tea. He's getting after it. I'll tell you who isn't that uh, bitch who took the pony on the airplane. Oh, yeah. It's true. Now. <laughs> She's not a nominee. Well, I. Okay. She I, got after it, man. I was on a Alaskan airline flight going to Portland. And I it, it was a new plane. And I had a first class seat. And. It was a nice first class for a mm-hmm. short flight on Alaskan flight. It had seats that reclined, had a lot of leg room, uh, spacious, doing it right, fantastic. Uh, also, Alaskan does something, which is... Oh, it's Alaska. Oh, sorry, Alaska. So, sorry, the Seinfeld. <laughs> sorry. I do that all I do that. Alaska. Well, they serve Alaskan amber, which, you know, maybe you're drinking that on most flights. Don't help, to, well, yeah. Alaska Airlines, yeah. sorry. Alaska Airlines does has a policy which all goddamn airlines should just adopt, which is if you have a first class ticket, you may gain entry into the first class lounge sure. or the captain's lounge. Used to be called it's not the first a, class lounge. It's not a lot of where you're going <laughs> and how far you're going. Right. Oh, you're only going you to remember, Chicago. Or yeah, yeah. You remember no, that's not going to. You have a you have a first class. You have first class to Florida, but you don't. But we only do New York. It's like I just you got a first class ticket. Can we sit here for eighteen minutes and have a goddamn uh, bagel and leave? Like they just let you in, right? Good number one. But anyway. Lots of leg room. I was surprised that there was so much leg room. And I had so much leg room that my backpack that I've been traveling with for about 10 years, which was full of everything, was pushed. I was sort of pushing it as far forward as I could. But the backpack is kind of robust. And the seat in front of me is about six inches of clearance. And now there is... 42 inches of space in between the back of the seat in front mm-hmm. of me and my front of my seat. I'm, I'm six two and I'm pointing my toes and trying to, trying to push it under. And then at some point they come by and they have that stupid argument. It's like, <laughs> we got to get this backpack like shoved yeah. under. Yeah. And it's like, okay, Max Zapata, you were yeah. on that flight. I was. <laughs> Through the grace of God, you're in coach. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. First class to him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The amount of foot room I had in first class was quite nice. My backpack was much further away than the actual width of your row. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. there's two rows on the plane that have 42 inches of space, and then the entire rest of the plane has 21 inches of space. Yeah, my backpack was uh, underneath the seat, and it was still on top of my feet. (laughs) I have the electric seat, and it doesn't have as much space underneath it. But here's my whole point. Why do I need twice 
the way. Why do I need yeah. twice as much room to fit? The whole thing is like during an emergency, you got to walk. Well, you have three people wide. I have oh, yeah. two people wide, and I have a ton of room. Why this is, isn't getting out? Why is my why am I inherently more dangerous than what's right behind me? The rest of the plane, like design the plane differently if that's an mm-hmm. issue. But anyway. She's like coming by, and I'm trying to push it with my toes, mm-hmm. like mash it under the seat in front of me. Meanwhile, there's three, we got a sidewalk worth of width to walk out of, and he's like mashing it. And I'm like, okay, but then there's a crazy bitch who has a pony where that same space is. That's insane. An actual pony. Yeah. Not being uh, hyper hyperbolic. Which is, I don't know, 18 backpacks in size. <laughs> But also, aren't they in the space that you go berserk on if my backpack is in? And then what sense does it make? And you have a horse. It's a decent-sized horse. I mean, it's a pony, but it's not it's, it, 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 it's not the size of a dog. It's big. And let me just say That would say be a this. humongous dog if that yeah, was a dog. Like a bigger right. than a Newfoundland. That thing's got to be 165 pounds. All right. A couple of things. Um. Dogs do things. Dogs. Thank you. Dogs are. We have seeing eye dogs. Mm -hmm. We have dogs that sniff out cocaine and Mm -hmm. explosives. There's military dogs and cop dogs. Cancer sniffing. Yes. Cancer sniffing. I will concede that the dogs that we dogs do technically do something. Ponies. Shit. They don't do anything. They go can to we, little girls' birthday parties. Can we can we at least do this, this mini horse thing? Can we at least make this rule, which is there is no reason to travel with a miniature horse because a miniature horse can't really be a service horse. They can make nutty broads feel better mm. about themselves yeah. or something, but they can't physically right. perform a task right. so we can take reptiles mm-hmm. and pelicans and macaws and miniature horses and put them all on one side of a ledger which is they can't physically do anything right okay thus if your animal can't physically do anything mm-hmm. shouldn't we just have it on a literal no-fly zone like there's no chance that this pony works your inhaler it just makes you feel good special about traveling, yeah. which I argue could be done in a therapeutic setting and not sure inconvenience could. other people on the airplane. It makes yeah. perfect sense. <laughs> or if you were in such a condition With- <laughs> where you just couldn't get airborne without your miniature horse, then... Maybe Flying you're one of the people who just shouldn't, shouldn't be flying. Fly. This maybe maybe I'm willing to make that I'm will Damn. I'm willing to say if that is your lot in life, mm-hmm. maybe not. Yeah. Like not I, you. I think it's like there may not be a handicap ramp to the Widowmaker roller coaster in Six Flags, <laughs> Georgia. Like uh, you're in a you're confined to a wheelchair. Maybe this maybe you just can't ride wheelchair. One of the well, you cannot just, ride yeah, a roller coaster. One of these I, things. I'm I'm sorry for that, but I accept it. Yeah. I've decided it's okay to live in that society. Um can we throw the picture back up real quick of the, the lady? Omaha to Chicago. Um I I did something I never do with news stories. Hold on, yeah. not an emotional support horse registered as a service that's right. So that's why they're letting the horse on. Because uh, it's registered as a service horse. Now, service horses live three times longer than dogs. So that's how, how why. How much times? Three, three times, times fool. fool. What's the difference? Uh, well, it's a beast she, of burden. So she brings this horse. She's had it since 2017. It used to be a show pony. She trained it at, to become a service horse. She trained it? Yes. Oh, boy. So she takes the horse to movies, grocery shopping, doctor's appointments. But- uh, she suffers from depression, severe anxiety, panic disorder, and PTSD. Supposedly, she couldn't even go uh, grocery shopping without having a severe anxiety uh, attack. I'm looking at her. She's get, she's going full Grubhub or she's <laughs> getting to the store, but she's not have, she's not hurting for calories. Well, I can that tell you was, that. That was the point. The I day she make. tries to ride that pony, the day that fucking pony goes into the ground. Yeah. <laughs> the pony's like, we have an agreement. It's a tacit agreement, but it is an agreement. So I, When I saw this news story, I did something I never do, and I read some of the comments. And the first comment I saw was, she needs an emotional support salad. 
I oh, we need to be fat shaming. And I'm That's sorry. What we need to do. So supposedly, <laughs> when people try to pet this horse, she hands him that card like this is a service animal. Do oh not pet. God. And yeah, she she just goes everywhere. She said she's going to start driving with the horse now. She said flying was too hard. Um, she even she tweeted her experience, which is pretty funny because uh, this is, this service horse, Flirty, the mini service horse, has its own Twitter and Instagram. And she's she, an influencer. Yeah. Because, mm. She says because the airport is smaller, the planes are smaller, and don't have solid bulkheads, Flirty couldn't help jostling the seat Flirty. of the person in the last row first class every time she moved. And uh, the the crew loved the horse, took a bunch of pictures with the, the horse. They, they always do that, yeah. which is all right. Now, Why first off, put the poor horse through that. I don't know. And what she she's going from Omaha to Chicago on business. Got a big <laughs> presentation. Visiting her aunt. Oh. Or did the Omaha Golden Corral burn down? And now. <laughs> She's got to see greener pasture. <laughs> that aren't oh, green. Also, the horse uh, supposedly is house trained. She, quote, hates pooping in public. Well, who doesn't? I but I don't understand what you're saying the difference between a service horse and an emotional support horse is because she's using it as an emotional support That's what horse. it sounds like to me. But everybody who says she can't take it, she goes, this is a service animal on every report. She's that, got a that- fucking fake doctor to write her a different note. Wow. Mm-hmm. And also, look. The thing hates pooping in public, and hey, it's a it's a two and a half hour flight. Blah blah blah. What happens when you get stuck on the tarmac when they're having the fucking you know all yeah, the stories yeah. everyone hears about everything's backed up or weather condition or mechanical what's it and they don't let you mm-hmm. off the plane and they're already pushed back. What happens when you're stuck for eleven hours with poopy? I mean, yes, Flirty. it does not like taking a dump on a plane, but yeah, I don't prefer what either. <laughs> Hour number two. Yeah. yeah. Number anyway. Two. It says the horse helps her with medical alerts and mobility assistance. <laughs> okay. Is she riding it? Listen, I was talking I about not. I was talking about the rule of law twenty minutes ago with the cops. This is the rule of law at the airport. The the whole fucking thing is breaking down, everybody. We must judge. We must tell people that cannot by the way, would you like to know the best thing you could do for this woman? Explain to her that she's not a victim, mm. that there's no reason she needs to travel with a horse, that she's perfectly capable, perfectly competent. She may go to the grocery market or to Omaha or to Chicago minus the horse. When we do this to her, we're basically Tell, it's like what we do to kids. This is my whole thing. Don't tell young black kids there's a target on their back and society hates them and wants to kill them. And don't tell dumb middle-aged broads they can't travel without a fucking horse. Somebody needs to crack the whip on her ass and go, no horse, get on the plane, here we go. And then when you do it once, you land and all of a sudden you feel like a fucking yeah. human being. What, what we do as a society is we go, oh, okay, okay, horse, this person slides deeper and deeper and deeper into the abyss of insanity the more she relies on the horse. The horse isn't the fucking cure. The horse is an enabler. The horse is basically like saying, uh, oh, you have back pain? Here's a bunch of Percocet. Okay. Thank you. You've engendered a lifestyle now. That get, yeah. Get back to me in a year and tell me how that's working. You have a bunch of back pain? Good. We're going to have to go to Pilates class, and we're going to have to sweat this one out. It's going to be uncomfortable. Not here's a handful of Percocet. Go ahead. See how it goes, everyone. And by the way, these people ever magically get healed? Does anything get better, or is it just more nut jobs on a fucking plane with a fucking horse? You're not helping anybody. Do you remember the first time you ever heard of an emotional support animal? I was at the doctor's office and I saw someone bring a dog in and I thought that was weird because you can't bring a dog in. And I asked about the dog. Oh, this is my emotional support animal. And I thought, what does that mean? I was fascinated. I'd never heard that term before. And now it's so common. (laughs) And you thought this would be the first and only time I hear about this. (laughs) I got to tell everybody before this goes out of style. How humiliated would you be? explaining to someone that you needed this dog because of your psyche, because you were so delicately wired, you yeah. couldn't go into a doctor's office or into an airport terminal. All right. You're thinking like a sane person. People who want yes. service animals would not be humiliated. Well, here's the thing about thinking like a sane person. If you're insane, then we must think mm. for you. Well, I like that. We'll put. Well, someone's got to do the sane thinking, and it certainly ain't her. That the, We must, if you're homeless and a junkie, we will think for you. Yeah. If you are traveling with a horse, we will do the thinning around here, Bubba Louie. 
Was that what Quick Draw McGraw would say? I don't know. Well, his bubble, yeah. Quick Draw McGraw would explain that he'd do the thinning okay. around here to Bubba Louie. Okay. I think so. Oh, who, I like was it. A, who was a Mexican chihuahua. We have to watch this now. You must find Quick Draw McGraw. Not to be confused with his cousin, El Cabong. <laughs> Sorry. Castro Ledge. You can look that up, Max Pata. Tweet us at Adam Carolla Show with your hashtag Castro Challenge with your question for Castro Challenge. Brought to you by Castro Ledge. Formulated with fluid titanium technology, reduces friction, maximizes engine performance. Three times! Three times, fool! Stronger fool against viscosity breakdown than leading full synthetic oil. It is Castro Ledge. We got a question for this week, Max Banner? We do. This is at Darren Harvey on Twitter. Wants to know hashtag Castro Challenge. Ace Man, what's the top speed you've driven a car? Hard to say, right? Somebody tweeted me this. No, I figured it out. Um, the, the Bugatti Charon or something, just like with a long, long rear end on it or something, just set the manufacturer, if you want to count Bugatti as a manufacturer, they just set the speed record at 304 miles an hour for a basically street legal vehicle. I went to uh, Pebble Beach and hung around at the Bugatti exhibit for a while they're back man they're doing crazy cars what artists i i love it that looks like an insane batmobile bugatti was making a car and they're making 10 of 10 examples and i said how much are they and the guy said um eight million euro and i said so it's a 10 million dollar car or a 10 11 million or nine and a half million dollar car and he's like yeah oh my God. and i said Who's going to buy your nine and a half million dollar car? And he said, oh, they're all sold. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they hadn't even made them yet. Tycoons, barons. Yeah. After uh, breaking this record, the president of Bugatti said, uh, this is it. Bugatti stopped going, is going to stop going for speed records and will now concentrate on other areas. Wow. Mm, well, 300 is pretty magical. Anyway, uh, I want 160 two or three or something in that Trans Am race and that Corvette. Not really even faster than that, I don't I don't think. Uh, but it's a kind of a tight track and it's people are around, a lot of other cars are around you and stuff like that. So, you know, the whole thing, again, I always tell people, get on an airplane, sit next to a bitch and, and a horse and you'll be going 550 miles an hour. Comfortably. You don't, you don't feel it. You get inside something that's pretty loud and hard and Did that edgy. feel like the car was coming apart? At 160? No, no. It was a modern-day race car that was built to go fast, and it just had a lot of bits and parts and junk and stuff in it. But, it, no, it didn't it – didn't, I was un, unfazed by the, the whole uh, endeavor. But And I was just trying to keep up the guy who was in front of me or past the guy who was in front of me. But And that car did have a digital readout on the dash, and it did – have the speed on the digital readout on the dash. I always tell you guys, race cars, the, the old vintage cars, have, they don't have a speedometer because it's just weight. Right. Why would you put it there? But when everything's digital, then it's Why not. not? Then, it's, then, it's not uh, then it's not weight anymore. Anyway, I think that's a fast ever been. It didn't even feel like anything. Castrol Edge, everybody. Check that out. All right. Let's take ourselves a quick break, and we'll come back. We'll hit the... <laughs> Wait. We have Bubba Louie. Breaking. Breaking news. And quick draw. Hey, quick draw. I think there's something you should know. I don't know. There's a thinning around here, Bubba Louie. Well, I think Scooter is doing all the thinning. Scooter? I think I might be scooting off. Yeah. I'll do the thinning around here, mm. Bubba Louie. Boy. There you go. We used to have a lot of fun with Mexican characters. <laughs> Every Mexican character was like way over the top. Yeah, Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, you'd always be napping against the cactus. <laughs> All right. We'll take yourselves a quick break. Come back with the news right after this. Geico presents Yikes. Another voicemail from your roommate. 
Sup, roomie? Hey, a pipe burst in the basement. It's completely flooded. Anyway, I called for someone to fix it, but in the meantime, I was thinking we could finally have that indoor pool party we've always wanted. I got some cool swan floaty things already going. Could you pick up some chips on your way home? Later. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected. Like if your roommate isn't the brightest pool float in the flooded basement. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance.